Shut up and sit down. Hi, hello. I'm the Cyber Earth Guru. Thank you for watching. So uh, this is the beginning of a, a week-long training course that I am in, and I am sitting here in the, I'll call it a hotel room, it's actually an inn, <laughs> um, and I've been watching video for videos for the last hour or so, and, and most recently I've been watching a lot of the uh, Jimmy DiResta videos, just because I find his, his spirit and his talent uh, interesting and compelling. And so this particular video was actually an interview from another maker from this thing called Workbench Con, which I wasn't tracking at all until I watched one of uh, Jimmy's videos. And it turns out that uh, I would say half of my YouTube uh, feed channels uh, is uh, they're there. And so <laughs> and interestingly enough and ironically enough, I was flying through Atlanta uh, uh, for work business the, the day that it started and I just I flew right over it and it is what it is but you know what is interesting to me is that Jimmy mentioned a couple things that I find not only fascinating but they mirror my life and we're, we're not too dissimilar in age but the one thing he mentioned is that he first started woodworking on a radio arm saw that his father put him in front of and sadly um, me too <laughs> I don't want to say sadly because, you know, it really kind of set the tone for what I'm doing these days. But what I will tell you is my dad uh, purchased this radio arm saw. It, I, I want to say it was a uh, Sear, from Sears or Montgomery Wards or some one of the, the department stores that were, you know, now we have Walmart and Target, whatever. But um, it wasn't a Craftsman. It was like Sears brand. Um radio arm saw and by the time I got it it was probably more jacked up than any tool than you could ever possibly manage uh, my dad had uh, fashioned on a new top because the top was destroyed the rip fence uh, rip fence was made out of uh, one by one uh, yeah and it was not straight <laughs> not plumb not anything that you would want to cut wood with <laughs> um, quite honestly and uh, but it ripped wood and boards about as well as anything uh, I just recently about six months or so ago actually got rid of the radio arm saw because I wanted um, what well, we purchased I should say I purchased a um, compound sliding miter saw which serves the same purpose but Jimmy mentioned in his video, or in the interview, I should say, that uh, it's one of the most dangerous tools that you could possibly ever use, and I completely agree. And when I was trying to get rid of it, to be quite honest with you, uh, one person backed out because they did some research and found out that they were very dangerous. Now, you know, I've always approached power tools with a healthy degree of respect, uh, as you should with any power tool. And this one in particular, definitely, uh, you had to be careful with. But I don't find it any different than the compound sliding miter saw, to be quite honest with you. In fact, uh, the deck is bigger. It was easier to manipulate uh, wood with a with a sliding uh, with the um, radio arm saw. But uh, uh, Jimmy said, you know, you got to make sure it's locked in its position when it's not on and in use at all times. And I always did that. I don't know why. Uh, maybe my father told me this when I was like 10 years old or whatever, and and I just did it. But uh, I always kept it locked, and I was never plugged in when I didn't need it. But I, th I find that interesting and 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 kind of thought provoking to me actually because uh, you know Jimmy I find in his videos is very genuine and uh, you don't see that a lot on YouTube quite honestly in fact uh, aside from Jimmy and Joel and a handful of others and and maybe Angus and Tom uh, most people are doing YouTube as a production thing, and it's acting, not a genuine sort of situation. Now, I hope uh, you all find me genuine if you watch this video, but uh, nevertheless. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, and he also mentioned as well, you know, he's got a lot of videos. He's got a million, 1.1 million subscribers, so that's, uh, you know, good for him. Uh, but he mentioned something about, you know, he, he he's made videos that he's forgotten about, and and <laughs> he goes back every once in a while and he watches them like, oh yeah, like, oh, that was stupid of me, I should have never done that, or hey, yeah, that reminds me of something I wanted to do. And I've had this experience recently and I just wanted to bring it up. I knew that I made a video about something. For the life of me, I could not remember at all what I did and how to do it. And it was at some uh, trick or tip or something that I did in Fusion uh, with the text and something or whatever. 
It doesn't really matter what it was, but I went and I str I, I you know trolled through my uh, YouTube feed and and there it was there was a video and I, I watched it and I educated myself again and uh, likely I'll be honest with you the next time that I uh, need this I'll probably have to go back to the same video because it's uh, I made the video about nine months or so ago maybe a year or so ago and I need it again so once maybe twice a year I need this little tech uh, technique and tip but um, so so this is why I make videos right so you all uh, need these videos as much as I do so uh, you want to figure something out or you can't quite figure it out and you you google it or you YouTube it or wh whatever the search engine of du jour is probably not Bing let's just be honest but um, so you go and you find these things and in, in, in most recently one of my videos actually the the curved text video and in, in fusion has become quite popular and and I'm excited by that because uh, I'm helping people out I'm imparting knowledge so um, you know this this video was really meant to say hey if you haven't checked out Jimmy Duresta go do it uh, with a 1.1 million viewers I suspect and me at I think 273 <laughs> you probably have seen him before you've seen me you know my first exposure to jimmy deresta was actually a a panel at a new york maker fair that i watched live streamed and i was just fascinated by the people that were on the panel and the fact that uh, they actually invited there were two uh, makers in the crowd that were not on the panel who i was following on youtube at the time that they invited to be part of the panel and i was like you know how how uh, genuine can that possibly be so in Jimmy's always saying you know it's a small community it's a tight community um, I don't think it's small I think it's tight uh, it, it's this altruistic sort of nature of the maker community that I find fascinating and that I just want to be part of and 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 someday you know if I get lucky and I don't have to work my day job and go to training <clears throat> for a week at a university and read 27 chapters of a book to gear up for said training um, then I will be a maker and I'll be part of the tight community. But uh, so, hey, I'll just leave you with that thought. Uh, if you haven't checked out Jimmy, check it out. I'll link the video that I watched down below as well as his channel and other folks that I think you should be watching. If you like this video, as always, uh, you know, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, you know what? Give it a thumbs up anyway. I would appreciate a subscribe if you watch this video. I was running my statistics the other day and 96% of the people you that watch me are not subscribed. Uh, and because subscriptions are like really important these days, I would really appreciate you just clicking subscribe. Quite honestly, I've been doing it a lot recently. I've noticed that I just watch videos and I'm not really subscribing. And you know, if I like the video, I just click subscribe. It doesn't clutter up my feed. I'm not gonna clutter up your feed. So hey, throw me a bone, subscribe, and let's get on with it. Um, so if you liked the video, again, thumbs up, and I uh, hope everyone has a great night. Thanks.